Well, today we're gonna to look at a brand new release of the Kinkini control module. This is an ESP32 S3 based board and it's got a whole lot of improvements on the old one. So the first thing we'll see on this board, it's an ESP32 S3, which means it's got more processing power as well as more memory. Then we've got 16 digital inputs or dry contacts. So you could use those, for example, for sensing door and window contacts, PIR sensors, or anything like that. We've got a 48, RS485 bus that allows us for communication over cable lengths up to 100 meters with RS485 devices. We've got four analog inputs. These can be used, for example, to read, for example, a uh, a little sensor that I had for measuring water pressure, which gives you a voltage. We've then got the GPIOs. Now, GPIOs can be used to connect temperature or temperature humidity sensors. We've got our uh, Ethernet connection, or we can connect this forward via Wi-Fi, and we've got a little IPEX socket, which means that we can put an external antenna for stronger reception. Next up, over A and B, we've got a transmitter and a receiver for the 433 megahertz for controlling it via radio waves. Um, number C, we've got the battery holder. So it's got a real-time clock inside here. So if you did load up um, the, the base software that this comes with, you can run the real-time clock with the battery. Um, we've got an I2C connector. So we can use that for communicating with any type of I2C devices or I squared C devices. We've also got an SD card slot. So this means that we can pop an SD card in there and it can record logs of data that is processing on this board external of any other type of system. On the bottom side over here, we've got 16 digital outputs. So these are op amps or they are, sorry, optocouplers. They're not relays, so they are only allowing for very low current controlling. So if you're wanting to control, for example, an AC circuit, I would connect up a bank of relays to these. Uh, we've got a reset and download button for the chip, which I find I don't even need to use. USB-C for programming unit. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna load this with ESP Home and we can do all sorts of cool things with this board. They've also added an extra protection over here for power. So if, for example, you reverse the polarity, like I can do sometimes, it's got a power protection circuit. So in order to set this up for ESP Home, you need to go to this page and download the code. I'll leave a link in the description below. So currently this code is set up for operating via Ethernet, but you could obviously modify that to take advantage of the Wi-Fi instead. So having a look at this code, obviously we've got all our switches, um, that's our GPIO inputs and our outputs. We've got our binary sensors, which is obviously our inputs. And then what I've done at the bottom here is I've gone and pasted in an extra sensor where did it go now? Um, there we go over there. I've put in a platform DHT. The pin is pin 38. And I've created that as my living room temperature and humidity to allow for a DHT 22 to operate as a temperature sensor. Now there is a little um, display on the board as well. If you want the display to operate, you just need to remove these comment outs and then it will currently just display this basic text, but you could always change this to display whatever you want. So let's have a look once we've loaded it up. So having a look at our board here, we've got our 12 volt power supply coming in over here and I've bridged it over here. This is to run these set of eight or nine optocouplers and then this is for the next set. So over here, you can see my DHT22 that I've connected in for temperature humidity. You can see we've got this little screen running over here. Now it doesn't flash like this when you see it in real life. That's just the camera that's flashing like this. On this side over here, we've got those two um, IR, sorry, not IR, radio frequency boards that you can for use for communicating with any other RF devices. So once you've all got it connected in Home Assistant, you can see here that we've got all of our outputs over here. So we can start powering those on and you'll see the little LED coming on on the board to show you that that one is activated.
Uh, we also have an RS-485 button. I don't have that connected at the moment. We've got our inputs. So you can either have voltage inputs or you can have current inputs. So that's super helpful. Then we have all of our inputs. So there's 16 um, inputs that we can use for any type of open and closed system that we want to monitor. And then we've got this DHT22. So you can see here it's pulling in a percentage humidity as well as my temperature. So this is an incredible board. This is just the base functions, but you can go and you can customize this and do whatever you like with it in Home Assistant. It also comes with this really nice injection molded plastic casing, which can be used to mount it on a DIN rail. It also comes with this really nice injection molded plastic case, which can be used to mount this on a DIN rail. Well, that's all for now. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.